Now at six, authorities in Ottawa County, Oklahoma, investigate the discovery of a body. Plus, investigators reveal the timeline of events in the night of a fatal hit and run in Cherokee County. And some four state natives describe what it's like to evacuate due to a storm. The four states most watched news starts now. Northeastern Oklahoma authorities investigate the discovery of a body. This is KOAM News at 6. I'm Dow Quick. Ottawa County Sheriff's Office confirms the discovery of a man's body near 22nd Northeast at the Tar Creek Bridge. The Grand River Dam Authority has requested assistance from the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation at what they call a suspicious death crime scene. The Miami Police Department is also working the case. We're going to bring you more details as this story develops on our website, koamnewsnow.com. Unsealed court documents reveal a more clear timeline of the hit and run fatality that happened back in August in Cherokee County. Rocco Joseph of Joplin is charged with felony leaving the scene of a fatal crash where a pedestrian, 60-year-old Gary LaTurner of Galena, was killed. Joseph's father, Dr. John H. Joseph, is charged with leaving the scene of a fatality accident and contributing to a child's misconduct of deprivations. The Kansas Highway Patrol obtained search warrants for the cell phones of Joseph and his father. The GPS locations, compared with multiple security cameras, put the son at the scene of the fatal crash, meeting with his father in Missouri, and then both returning together to observe the Kansas crash scene 40 minutes later. The Turner's body was found in the south ditch of K-66 10 hours after the crash. We have more on the history of this case as well as extensive court documents on our website, koamnewsnow.com. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty now for a first look at the weather. Well, it's turned out to be a nice day for us around the Central Plains. This temperature is uh, warmer than where we should be for this time of the year. 82 in Joplin, 82 in Pittsburgh. You can see most of us kind of 80 to about 85 degrees across the region. If you are going to be outside this evening, we're going to slide back through the 70s into the 60s. But clear skies, so not a whole bunch going on here. But we can drop south. Here's Milton, which actually the eye wall is making landfall as we speak. You can see the outer edges of the eye wall is really pushing in just south of Tampa toward Sarasota. So they're getting very heavy amounts of rain and winds are gusting near 100 miles per hour as this continues to move inland. So we're gonna have more on Milton plus we have some changes as well coming up here in just a bit. See you soon. The impacts of Hurricane Milton are already being felt by some residents of the four states. KOIM Samantha Walker sat down with two Pittsburgh native who experienced the storm evacuations firsthand. So it was kind of um, surreal. You could see panic hitting Monday and we were just ready to get out of there. Maddie Burdick, a Pittsburgh native, loves playing college softball in Daytona Beach. When Hurricane Helene hit, she was allowed to shelter in her dorm. But as Hurricane Melton nears, it became obvious that wasn't an option for her. But Milton, it just kept getting worse, and we were just thinking of how we were going to evacuate when it was possible just because of classes and everything like that. So it was a little more stressful just trying to figure out plans and everything like that because it started to look even worse as it went on. Her mom, Jennifer, was visiting when news of the hurricane broke. The weather just completely shifted, and it got really windy, and the tide started coming and it almost looked like the ocean was a little angry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we went back to our hotel and we had already been watching the weather, but we realized, okay, this is probably like it's time to just, we went ahead and booked her ticket. As they tried to leave the area, they saw how others were preparing for the hurricane. Many of those staying purchased generators and boarded up their homes. Others tried to move as far from the storm's projected path as possible. Traffic was already really, really backing up um, and gas prices in a matter of, gosh, three hours. Gas prices went from like 260 something to 315 and you could just see the lines of vehicles lining up for gas. Jennifer and Maddie say they're grateful to have made it out of the area when they did and are thinking about those near the coast. I have a couple of friends and teammates that are still in Fort Myers. Like we have 
Fort Myers and then some are in Orlando, so it's just kind of like praying for them as well. Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Maddie says she isn't sure when her college will resume classes, but she has a ticket to return to Daytona Beach Monday night. Carthage utility workers go to Florida to chip in with hurricane recovery efforts. That story is coming up. And some Cherokee County agencies team up to help provide low income housing information. While residents of Florida are preparing for Hurricane Milton, people are still recovering from the damage of Hurricane Helene. Workers with the Carthage Water and Electric Plant traveled to Tallahassee to respond to the damage from Helene. KOIM's Melissa Alexis has more. These folks are on boots on the ground immediately responding to the emergency. Linemen from Carthage Water and Electric Plant in Carthage traveled to Tallahassee before Hurricane Helene hit in anticipation of the damage. A lot of tall, 80, 100 foot tall pine trees that are down. Uh, obviously, they drag everything down with them. The lineman's main focus was to help Tallahassee residents regain power. Through the night, you hear the, the wind and the rain, you know, uh, you do hear that some. You're a little bit sheltered just because of the hotel you're in or wherever it is you're staying. Uh, and then when we woke up the next morning, we had 53,000 people out of power. CWEP sent six linemen to Tallahassee to help out with Helene, and now they have four linemen in Orlando to help with Hurricane Milton. It takes a lot of time for the water in Orlando to d dissipate to get to a point where they can actually go in and, and make some of the um, needed repairs. It'd be devastating. Milton looks like it is. It could turn. It just kind of depends on, uh, you know, so they're, they're afraid of water, they're afraid of wind and trees. Crews from Carthage Water and Electric Plant worked 16-hour days working to restore power to the affected areas. Reporting in Carthage, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. Members of the Carthage Water and Electric Plant crew left uh, Missouri on Monday to go to Orlando and respond to Hurricane Milton. Now, some Cherokee County groups team up to assist people in need of low-income housing. Cherokee County Health Department and the USDA Rural Development Program will host an event next Tuesday on how to fill out applications for Section 502 and 504 housing. Event organizers hope to also provide information on the financial impacts of low-income housing and on low-income energy assistance. Whether is this going to make my house value go up or how is this going to make my insurance maybe go up or down since it's more safe. That way then maybe their cost of their insurance may be lowered. Various different things like that. And also we're also going to have another individual there that will help out with LEAP. So the local or uh, low income energy assistance program as well. That event's going to be held at the Crossroads Christian Church on October 15th at 2 p.m. A little bit later, a Joplin Art Club trades in the classroom for a trip to the Humane Society. Plus, we are going to continue to warm up over the next few days. We're going to check that out coming up. Well, it turned out to be another nice day for us today. Very warm temperatures into the mid 80s during the afternoon hours, about 10 degrees above where we should be for this time of the year. Great shot of our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex Tower Cam at downtown Joplin. Uh, pretty much clear skies, a lot of traffic going on in downtown, but in general, if you're going to be out this evening, it is shaping up uh, pretty good. All right, dropping south, here's Hurricane Milton, which has been weakening throughout the day. Of course, remember yesterday and the day before we had Category 5 hurricane. Uh, at one point, top five strongest hurricanes uh, in this part of the world, but it has weakened a little bit with this upper level wind shear. You can see all those tops of those clouds kind of blowing off, but here are the highest clouds just to the west of Tampa and that eye wall is making its way inland as we speak. So Sarasota right about in here is taking a direct hit. So in the eye wall, you ha only have winds at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Right outside the eye wall, you're getting gusts 100 to 120 upwards to 125 miles per hour. And then on the south side, this is where we are getting the big storm surge. So from Venice to Fort Myers to Naples, Florida. In fact, we've got a picture of Naples, Florida right now, and you can see those waves just crashing in. So that water is being shoved right on land. In a lot of areas, they're going to have storm surge 10, 11, 12 feet 
as we go through the evening hours for us tonight. So, of course, thoughts and prayers for everybody in the peninsula of Florida. But the eye wall will continue to make its way on shore over the next hour. After that, it will greatly weaken as we go through the rest of the overnight hours. Still has sustained winds 110 to 120. And again, as it pushes inland, it will start to weaken. It will drop to a 2 to a 1, but still should hold hurricane status all the way through the peninsula of Florida. And then once it gets out, then it'll just become a tropical depression, tropical storm, then depression as we get into the daytime hours tomorrow. Here at home, it looks pretty good. Low to mid 80s. If we look outside here, seventh and range line sitting at 82 east southeasterly winds at about five miles per hour through the evening 70s, 60s into the 50s for overnight lows. We have clear skies. There's not much going on here. If we look out toward the west, not a whole bunch going on, but we do have this weak little kink in the upper level flow, a weak little upper level wave that will slide in as we go into the daytime hours tomorrow. So what that will do is give us some clouds in here later on tonight. And then as we go through the morning, you can see a couple little showers trying to pop up on the Kansas and the Oklahoma side. They're really just going to fall apart, but Kansas and Oklahoma, there may be a sprinkle or two. High temps are going to go into the mid 80s for highs again during the afternoon hours tomorrow. We drop back mid 50s tomorrow night. Friday, we do it again. We're going to the mid to upper 80s. In fact, we're going to press record highs by the time the weekend rolls around. 56 to start, 79 by noon. High temp, 86 degrees on your Thursday. Staying hot, warm slash hot, Friday, Saturday. But look at Sunday, 79 down to 66 for a high. As we go into Monday, we hold into the 70s on Tuesday and Wednesday. There are better chances for rain. We're going to get into the part of the pattern that we actually get some rain, especially in about uh, eh, 7 to 10 days. Things will start to turn better for us because we are so dry across desperately, the region. Desperately, desperately need it. Boy, the temperature, the bottom is going to drop out here. Yeah, it's going to feel like October. It will indeed. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. And don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Get severe weather updates sent straight to your phone. It's absolutely free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Still ahead, Miami High School softball plays in the Super Regionals this afternoon. And a few of the standouts from Missouri Southern and Pitt State basketball preview the 2024-25 season. John Dale says those stories and more up next. Well, Miami High School softball has a chance to punch its ticket to the Class 4A state tournament. After the Lady War Dogs won their regional at home last week, they advanced to Super Regionals today. It's a best of three series at Wagoner. While the Lady War Dogs lost the first game 6-4, to four, then with their backs against the wall, they win the second end of the doubleheader 3-2. That forces a winner-take-all Game 3 tomorrow afternoon between the War Dogs and Bulldogs. First pitch is scheduled for noon. Winner advances to the state tournament. Well, a month from today, all four of our local Division II college basketball teams will have begun their season. Yesterday, we heard from the head coaches at MIAA Media Day. Now let's turn to the players, starting with the floor general for the Gorillas men's team. This year, you know, our main focus is getting back to that conference championship. You know, we, we ended up as runner-ups, but we really do want that back. So we've just been sitting here working, trying to get back to that, and then hopefully get us a higher seed in the national tournament to be able to maybe host the, maybe host the tournament. Coach is looking to me be more of an on-the-court leader than I was last year. You know, we've had the seniors. I was learning through them, but this year you want me to be stepping to their leadership roles. Missouri Southern men's basketball has almost an entirely new team. The Lions bring in nine freshmen and transfers and return just two players that started multiple games. We've been really emphasizing defense this year. I think that's going to be a major like, part for us this year. We're a lot longer this year, taller, stronger, so it should help us get a lot more wins. Yeah, the team chemistry, um, you know, it's a really fun group to be around um, from the top to bottom. Everybody gets along um, outside of the locker room, inside of the locker room, so just 
staying together, um, building that bond, building that chemistry is one of the biggest things right now. Missouri Southern women's basketball also has quite a few fresh faces, but the Lady Lions do bring back multiple starters from a group that won 20 games a year ago. I think we just have to be able to finish games. I think that's something we struggled with last year. We weren't able to finish some games that we really needed, especially um, at the end of conference play that kind of bumped our seating down for the tournament and put us in a hard spot where it was win or go home, and we went home. It's just continuously, like, in practice, building that connection, just because we do have half transfers, half returners, which is nice, but I think it's just building from there and getting that team chemistry and moving forward. And last but certainly, certainly not least, Pitt State women's basketball won the MIAA tournament for the first time ever last year. Gorillas return a lot of impact players from that team. And it's just great to return people who you've played with and who you've been at the lowest of lows with and, you know, obviously the highest of highs too. And so, like, when you share those moments with people, it just creates a special bond. And you can clearly see that, like, when we play together on the court. Yeah, and I think it's just everyday attitude showing up willing to work, um, never getting complacent, never, you know, just putting it in cruise, just always foot on the gas, ready to work every day. Closing things out with Major League Baseball, Game 3 of the American League Division Series between the Yankees and Royals just getting underway at Kauffman Stadium. They try to take a two games to one series lead. This game three is going to be pivotal for the rest of the way throughout the series. Yeah, the loser of this game is going to feel a lot of pressure Very when it much comes so. to the next game. We'll be right. Here's a look at what's coming up on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. We're going to have the latest on Hurricane Milton, the second hurricane to slam the East Coast in just a couple of weeks. Plus, a candidate for the U.S. Senate from Missouri makes a stop in Joplin tonight. And we have some tips from the experts on dealing with emotional exhaustion. Those stories and a lot more, it's coming up tonight, KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. Last month, we told you about a 13-year-old Joplin teen, Drake May, and the art club he helped create for other kids. Well, today, Drake and members of that art club took a field trip to the Joplin Humane Society. The group got to see how the JHS operates, where the animals stay, and found out how to volunteer. That the kids that are in the art club take away that they can make a difference in the community, and that people... Um, who are needing a pet could come in and pick one that still needs a forever home and they're, com they're really taken care of here. You know, they get all their vaccinations and they're microchipped, um, they're spay and neutered, so they're just ready for you to take them home and love them. The trip comes as a follow-up to last week's class where the kids practiced pet portraits. Some changes coming in our weather over the next week and there's some big doings down in Florida right now. Yeah, of course, uh, Hurricane Milton is making landfall right now as we speak. But for us, we are going to continue to heat up over the next few days. Could get a random shower on the Kansas and Oklahoma side tomorrow. Uh, strong cold front Sunday. So this drops us back down to closer to where we should be for this time of the year early next week. Final sports note. They're through an inning and a half at Kauffman Stadium. They start for the Royals starting pitcher, Seth Lugo. Six up, six down so far for him. Yeah, let's see if that can hold and win a second game in this series. We'll see you right back here for KOIM News at 10. Let's make it a great evening.